Hey folks, uh, I'd like to put a couple of content warnings into the beginning of this video that I'm recording right now. Just for safety's sake, please be aware that this video will contain references to suicide and depression and general mental illness vibes, so like, prepare for that and stuff. I really appreciate you watching this. Uh, let's now get into the meat of the video. This is a story about when I went to college. And uh, it's a pretty nice story, but you have to wait to the end to get the nice part. Um, when I first went to college, I spent about a semester just kind of faffing about, and I fell in with some of the wrong people, and uh, I ended up being really discontent. See, when you go to a new school, you kind of have like an opportunity to remake yourself, and I felt like I was squandering that opportunity. Uh, until in the second semester, about midway through, I ended up dating this girl who I had been talking to. Uh, funny story, I met her while I was uh, at dinner with a friend and he'd invited me with because he was seeing this girl and he wanted to make a good impression, but he was really nervous. So he brought me along for moral support. And it turned out that I had way more in common with that girl than he did. And eventually, you know, a few things happened and we ended up dating each other. Um... We dated for about a year and a half, and uh, it was really cool because when I came out to her as non-binary, you know, I mean, she was cisgender, so it kind of took a little bit of working out for her to get, like, 100% on board with all of that, and it was pretty disappointing, her reaction at first, but uh, I think with time, she sort of ended up becoming more used to it, and that made it all okay, in my book at least at the time. Uh, that was a bit of a red flag in hindsight. The summer of, uh, I should say, the summer leading into my junior year, if you fast forward a couple years, uh, I ended up playing this video game. Uh, this video game was called Mass Effect, and it was really cool. And I was a little bit late to the hype train for Mass Effect because this is taking place now in, what was it, 2014, something like that? Uh, somewhere around there. And I was having a really good time, you know, I had been out as trans and queer for then, you know, I, shoot, I want to say like four or five years in various capacities uh, to various people, so it felt really good when I was playing as Female Shepherd, who I thought, you know, I had heard she had the better voice actor, and she had some cool scenes with her potential romances, and I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll get on board, I'll play Fem Shep. <laughs> um... I ended up romancing a character in the game called Liara, and Liara was special because she's from a monogendered race of aliens called the Asari, and they're all pretty feminine, so it ended up creating kind of a quasi-like space lesbian romance between uh, Female Shepherd and Liara, and I thought that was really special and really cool, and it continued through all the games, and um, I ended up getting really into it, and the ending, of course, for me was really heartbreaking because I had to finally finish this series that had meant so much to me. And I remember my uh, ex was there when I was finishing the game, and she thought it was really cool, but it took me so long to finish the end of it that she fell asleep. And uh, I stayed up, and I finished the game, and... Uh, <laughs> I just was so blown away, and I felt like I had feelings that I couldn't share with anybody. You know, she was asleep, and I was just alone in that moment. And it made me realize how alone I was in general. And it made me feel as though nothing was okay. And uh, to nobody's surprise in hindsight, I tried two separate times that same summer to come out to my girlfriend as a trans woman and she did not like it, and she did not buy it. And uh, that October was the last time. It was around, I, I want to say, shoot, a month before that, that I tried to come out to her, and she was completely uh, defensive and upset, and she cried, and I just had to sit there and dissociate and wonder where the hell my relationship was going to go and where my life was going to take me because I loved this girl so much and she just didn't accept me. And this might be all kind of funny to hear, but 
for that last month that we dated, I was completely checked out of the relationship. You know, when she rejected me, you know, when I was telling her about who I really was, that was the moment when we really broke up in my mind. I mean, we broke up about a month later, like I said, and, you know, I it was just because I was not feeling very sympathetic to her situation because I wasn't feeling as sympathetic to her. She had rejected who I was, and I think she eventually saw that I wasn't sympathetic to her feelings anymore, and that upset her a lot, and so she just told me to get out, and I did. Uh, from then on, I became increasingly depressed. I briefly dated another girl, a girl that I reconnected with from high school, and that was nice. And then the same thing had happened. Like my previous girlfriend, she was bisexual, she was queer, and for some reason she just didn't want to date a trans woman. Uh, and I went through the same thing, and I broke up with her um, when she got aggressively physical with me. We're not going to go into that too much this video. But uh, that was a moment of, you know, sort of choosing to value myself above the person that I had been placing myself in vulnerable positions for, and I realized that I couldn't sacrifice myself for those relationships anymore. So I broke up with her, and I went to this uh, study abroad group in Ireland, and I went to study abroad in Limerick, and it was a lot of fun, and I met uh, Laura on that study abroad group, and of course, those of you who know my channel, who know me, know that Laura and I eventually ended up dating. So there's kind of a happy ending to that story, and when I came out as trans to Laura, she did accept me, and it was lovely. And um, it took me a while to get to that point, because I ended up coming back for my senior year of college, just increasingly depressed and upset, and I got a decent job and started feeling better, and then I lost that job when I got in a car accident where I ran a guy and his girlfriend off the road uh, and over a fire hydrant, and my car was totaled, and I just kept staying in all, every night and drinking and drinking, and some days I would pass out, on, and I would wake up on the floor the next afternoon having missed uh, most of my classes, and it was just, it was a bad place to be in to be self-medicating with substances like that. Uh, I started smoking a lot more that year. That was really the year when, you know, I'd smoked socially before, but that was the year when it picked up. And um, it got really bad. Everything got really bad. And I was more suicidal than usual. A lot of my art got a lot darker at that time. Uh, if you've read my poetry, you can probably spot the places. And it was in that moment that I found something else. I found another video game, and this is probably a weird thread to be following, but I played this video game called Life is Strange. Just because it was discounted, the whole season was $5, and I was like, all right, I'll pick it up, sure. Uh, I've heard good things. It seems interesting. I've never really played these, like, Telltale-style games before, but how bad can it be for 5 bucks? It was wonderful. Um, Life is Strange tackles a lot of mental health issues, and uh, I did my best to save every character I could. Um, I think I wanted to believe, because I knew that they were worth saving, I wanted to act on that to feel like I was worth saving too. And I ended up... Um, I ended up finishing the game... And uh, at the end of the game, you can sort of choose to fully realize the romantic potential of Max, the main character's relationship with Chloe, who is the other female lead. And I did that, and that was so wonderful. And it broke my heart um, when that was over. And I realized how personally invested I had become in Max and Chloe, and it just hit me that I f had inserted myself so fully into that story about mental health and about grievance and loss and just all of these emotions flooded through me and I just cried all night. You know, I went to, I went to school the next day and all of my classes, my Shakespeare class and uh, my linguistics class, I was very not okay. <laughs> uh, I was extremely not okay. And everybody kind of saw it, and they just, <laughs> my friends who were my age would ask me, like, 
hey, are, are you all right? And I was like, I just finished Life is Strange last night. And they just completely understood <laughs> because of the emotional havoc that story can wreak on your uh, entire life. And for me, it was extra personal because all along I had been inserting myself into these stories where I was allowed to play as a girl character, but then I was allowed to create meaningful relationships as that girl character with other girl characters. And all of a sudden, things opened up for me, and, you know, I, I was no longer this person unseen, and I, when I played those games, I felt fully seen and fully realized. And I think what kept me afloat in those really dark times was being able to hang tight to those feelings and to put them somewhere and actualize them in some way. And it wasn't real in the sense that the characters weren't real people, but when you played, it f could feel real if you put yourself into it enough, and I've never had a problem with that. So eventually I ended up um, becoming increasingly depressed. Actually, my, my mental health got even worse after I graduated, and uh, it's still pretty bad now. So no happy ending to that story yet, but I do have girlfriends who love me and who see me as me, and I'm able to be more forthright with people about who I am, and that matters to me a lot. That's changed my life too. But it all started with little moments, and I think those video games were a big part of it. So, um, thanks for being here for that and for helping me remember these moments, these small moments of happiness. Um, I'm a dumb, lazy bitch, so I'm not going to put any credits at the end of this video to bother you guys with. Usually I do patron credits. Um, I want to do something cool for patrons, but I haven't really figured out what, you know, you guys want different patron rewards or whatever. I don't know. I, I'm a little emotional. Even just uh, saying this all to you is very emotional for me. So I'm just going to cut things here and end on a happy note, which is um, there are ways out of really dark places, even when you can't see it. And uh, there's a lot of happiness in life, even when you don't think it's possible, and even when you're told it's not possible. Um, fun fact, I went to a rally where my ex was about a year after she and I broke up, and the first time she had done my makeup was the time that I came out to her specifically as non-binary at the time, and then later I was out as a trans woman, and she saw my makeup and she said, wow, your makeup looks really nice. You used to be so shit at it, <laughs> you know, kind of trying to throw shade at me. And I look back on that and laugh because guess who's cuter now, bitch? Guess who's cuter now? This video has a happy ending after all. Ha 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 ha. Fuck. <laughs>